Hello everyone, welcome back to the latest lecture session. In the last three or four sessions, we looked at uh, different aspects pertaining to line softening. But uh, before we go further, at least in this session, let us look at the bigger picture. I want to remove hardness, calcium and magnesium. Uh, how do I remove? By precipitating them, right? Calcium carbonate, CaCO3 solid or magnesium hydroxide, MgOH2 solid. So, for both these cases, we typically raise the pH. In general, just rising the pH is good enough if there is enough carbonate for the calcium carbonate to precipitate out. But if there is not enough carbonate, then I have to add a source of carbonate. So, adding a source of carbonate if required and raising the pH for all the cases. So, how do I raise the pH? I raise the pH by adding lime, calcium hydroxide, right? And to remove the relevant uh, non carbonate hardness, if or you know the case obviously when there is not enough uh, bicarbonate present, you are going to add a source of CO3 2 minus that is soda let us say right. So, lime and soda and that is how we looked at it and we looked at the relevant reactions and we summarized them in this manner. In general if there is carbon dioxide or H2CO3, this is carbon dioxide aqueous right dissolved or H2CO3, then you will have to remove that. This is an acid. So, for that you look at it, these are the stoichiometric ratios, we already looked at them. So, carbonate hardness, calcium, you are precipitating that as CaCO3 the solid, right? And 2 CaCO3 will come out in this reaction, right? So, uh, here we already have enough carbonates, we are just adding lime to increase the pH, let us see, right? And then calcium non carbonate hardness, right? But this we discussed at the end here, let me come back to that. Then magnesium when we have carbonate hardness, but magnesium we know it is going to precipitate out as magnesium hydroxide. But when I add lime, obviously there is calcium, right? But when I add lime here to increase the pH, I still have carbonates present and thus the calcium that I add can precipitate out as calcium carbonate if there is enough, uh, what is this, carbonate present, right? Magnesium non carbonate hardness, right? Here, same case as above to remove magnesium, I am going to increase the pH by adding lime. But here it is non carbonate hardness, not enough carbonate. So, for that reason, I have to add uh, some soda ash so that the calcium in the lime that I added will be removed, let us say. And then we look at calcium non carbonate hardness, right? Here, non carbonate hardness, so adding lime here itself will make no sense. But I know that calcium will precipitate out as CaCO3, the relevant solid. Yes. So, here I am not adding lime, I am not increasing the pH, I am directly adding a source of CO3 2 minus. So, CaCO3 the solid will precipitate out. So, that is why you can uh, you know just intuitively come up with this particular table, not necessary to mug it up in general. And why do we add the excess? Because we want to keep the solution super saturated to drive the reaction, let us see. So, what are the limitations, right? 100 percent removal is not possible. Why? As we looked at it, the system is in equilibrium, CaCO3 the solid will always be in equilibrium with some concentration or the other of Ca2 plus and we also looked at Ksp let us say, right. So, as you can see chemically it is not possible at least with respect to precipitation to have zero concentration, something or the other is always going to be in equilibrium with your relevant solid let us say, at least uh, feasibly. And also stoichiometric doses themselves do not force reactions to occur. For example, we looked at a particular uh, question and then solved it, right? But the way the question was asked, they did not talk about the excess or what is required to drive the reaction. In general, just maintaining the stoichiometric ratios will not start or trigger this precipitation. For precipitation to occur, you need nucleation and then there are other steps, let us say agglomeration, ripening and such, right? Or crystal growth. For these two occur or you know for the rate to be high enough for these steps to occur, you need high enough concentration of the relevant uh, reactants let us say, meaning calcium or the carbonate. So, the next aspect is stoichiometric doses themselves do not force reactions to occur. Why is this? In general, you know you have different steps in precipitation, right? First step is nucleation which is pretty slow and for that to occur, you need remarkably high concentrations of the relevant uh, what do we say dissolved compounds or supersaturated solution is required let us say. You can look at the relevant uh, info there, right? But again here 
as I mentioned we needed the solution to be super saturated or to bypass this nucleation step right where you know I can provide a surface or where I want to provide a surface for the relevant other crystals to precipitate on and have a crystal being formed. What can I do or what do people do? So typically if this is my sedimentation tank and the sludge settled down, here the sludge is CaCO3 the solid. Rather than just removing it, what can I do? And if this is the tank where I am adding the lime or soda as such that the CaCO3 is being precipitated out later, so I can you know recycle some of it, some, why? So I have some CaCO3 solid here and that will give the relevant surface area. Here it is an issue of both surface area and supersaturation. So I can really supersaturate to high levels or also supersaturate it and also provide some surface area for the relevant solids to precipitate upon. So there are two ways to go about it and one aspect is obviously recycle, the other aspect is obviously stoichiometric doses are not enough. That is why we need to add excess to supersaturate the relevant solution, let us say. That is something to keep in mind. Next aspect is if lime dose is less than alkalinity, then the pH may not be raised high enough. So one aspect in general, in this case pH is equal to 7 or usually around 7, 6 or 8 let us say, right. And at that case alkalinity is equal to or almost equal to HCO3 minus, right. We looked at why I am not going to go into that, but in general alkalinity is acid neutralizing capacity let us say, right. If it adds, if you add H plus, right, if I add H plus to the relevant water HCO3 minus will neutralize this acid let us say, right. But here you know it seems contradictory, if lime dose is less than alkalinity then the pH might not be raised. So here when they are talking about alkalinity or rather when I am talking about alkalinity, I guess I am referring to HCO3 minus, but layman's terms you know in general get questions too I guess they confuse this or use this interchangeably. So keep in mind that here we are talking about HCO3 minus, why? Even when I add OH minus from my lime and that can be neutralized by my particular uh, what is this HCO3 minus, right? Why HCO3 minus can act as both an acid or a base let us say, right? So that is why that is one thing to keep in mind if lime dose is less than the HCO3 minus concentration then the pH might not be raised high enough to drive the reactions and why is that critical typically magnesium hydroxide, right? Uh, MgOH twice we looked at the relevant figures for this typically pH around 11 or 11.5 is required for the precipitation or to occur, right. So that is something to keep in mind. Obviously OH minus is reactant and so when pH is high, OH minus is high. So thus high pH is required. So that is something to keep in mind. Why is this an issue? Well, two cases obviously lime dose, alkalinity, typically water you will typically have alkalinity. So you need to have considerably high lime doses, yes. And in this case, uh, I guess lime dose is equal to alkalinity plus the excess should be used, let us say, right. So excess for two cases because it is just not sufficient to look at the HCO3 minus concentration to increase the pH also, I will have to add excess. Excess for two cases, excess is for driving the stoichiometric uh, reaction or the reaction and then when uh, it is just about near about alkalinity, I guess, right. Why is this? To increase the pH. So let us move on, recarbonation, right. So I am done with removing calcium and magnesium by precipitating out CaCO3 and magnesium hydroxide, right. But in all this case, what have I been doing? I am adding CaOH twice, lime, what is this a source of? It is a source of OH minus and also Na2CO3, soda ash or soda, what is this a source of? It is a source of CO3 2 minus, right. So this strong base, right, CO3 2 minus also will increase the pH a bit depending on where the pH is, right. So at the end, you know, depending on which step you are at, the pH will be very high and this very high pH cannot be supplied to relevant uh, population, right. Other than that, it will even lead to corrosion of your relevant uh, distribution network and such. So you have to bring the pH down, if not to 7, at least 8 or so acceptable level, you have to bring the pH down. So what is an easy way? There are different ways again adding acid and such HCl to bring it down. But again when I add HCl 
I am also adding Cl minus, I am increasing the total dissolved solid and that is not something I want to do. And again keep in mind that by adding lime, I have removed all the HCO3 minus. HCO3 minus is a good buffer, right? It can act as both an acid or a base. So, if there is no buffer in the solution, the pH can either increase or decrease depending on either the acid or base coming into contact with your water. So, here I want to achieve two objectives. One is I want to decrease the pH to acceptable levels without increasing the TDS, right? And the second one is if possible add a buffer. Buffer is something that will prevent excessive change in pH around that pKa value. So, what is a good uh, way to go about it? Looks like the carbon dioxide which we removed earlier. So, I will bubble carbon dioxide gas through water, right? And once it becomes or dissolves H with H2O, it is going to be uh, in equilibrium with H2CO3. And obviously, H2CO3 again HCO3 minus will be formed if there is a lot of CO3 2 minus H2CO3 that we formed here, right? will react with CO3 2 minus or the H2CO3 that we add will react with OH minus again HCO3 minus. So, I am bringing down the pH and also seeing to it that I am adding a buffer, right? HCO3 minus will provide a relatively decent buffer near pH 7. Why? We know that pKa1 is 6.3. So, that is one aspect to keep in mind. So, here when we are adding this and looking at these aspects, we need to look at an aspect called undersaturation or supersaturation by CaCO3. Right? We will look at why that is relevant. If water is undersaturated, water can be aggressive, let us say, right? It can be corrosive and can lead to pipe corrosion, right? If it is remarkably undersaturated, it can lead to pipe corrosion. In general, ideal case, you know, we saw some picture where precipitation was at this level, right? Everything precipitated out, and I think one fourth or one third of the area was available for the pipe. So, you do not want that obviously, but you want something like there is a thin layer of the precipitate all around such that you know the pipe is not corroded, let us say. So, you want it to be just right at that border and have some precipitation that is the ideal case, but you do not want it to be undersaturated, neither do you want it to be super saturated, right? Because then there will be too much scaling. So, how do we look at this or how do we understand this? There is a particular way to go about it. It is called the Langlier stability index, I guess, right? So, I think there is some uh, typo when I change the font. So, we ignore this, right? So, we have some equations that we need to keep in mind here. We know that CaCO3, the solid goes to, uh, this is the solubility reaction of CaCO3, dissolution reaction goes to Ca2 plus and CO3 2 minus. For that, we know that we have Ks or Ksp, the solubility product, let us say, right? This is nothing but the equilibrium constant. Similarly, we know that HCO3 minus can dissociate into H plus and CO3 2 minus, right? So, again, uh, for that, we will have its own equilibrium constant, which we use to form pKa, but again, I am digressing here. From these two reactions, depending upon, you know, changing the reactants and products in this particular first reaction, I can add them up and you see that I will get this particular reaction. If I swap this first reaction, right, such that Ca2 plus plus CO3 2 minus goes to CaCO3 the solid. Why do we write it in this way? This is the typical way for which the solubility product is being calculated. But if I swap it, then it is going to become 1 by Ks. The equilibrium constant for this reaction which has been swapped will be 1 by Ks. And then if I add this new reaction 3 and 2, what will I get? So, CO3 2 minus CO3 2 minus, I can cancel them out. It looks as if Ca2 plus plus HCO3 minus goes to the CaCO3 solid plus H plus. So, what is this new equilibrium constant for this one though, right? It will be K2 by K. Yes, right. This into the K for this, the K for the second or the third reaction is 1 by K. So, it turns out to be the K for this composite reaction is K2 by Ks, let us say, right. Let us just use this. So, if I, how I want to use this to develop a relationship, right. What am I trying to do? We are trying to see to it that we can look at the pH of the solution and then look at the pH of the saturated conditions and compare and see whether it is oversaturated or undersaturated. So, for that I am trying to get this pH uh, saturation or equilibrium conditions, let us see, right. So, let us just use this. 
So, how do I write the K for this reaction? We know it is going to be the activity of the relevant uh, products CaCO3 the solid activity of H plus rise to the stoichiometric coefficients nothing here right and what else do we have? We have Ca2 plus and HCO3 minus. Obviously, as I mentioned activity of solids we assume it to be 1 assuming it is a pure solid mole fraction is equal to 1 and assuming that activity is equal to concentration let me write it in the next page here. So, I have the equilibrium constant for the relevant solid it is 1 and I am now approximating the activities by the concentrations right. So, this is what we have right. So, let me make sure I uh, put it down right yes that is fine and now I just want to take the logarithm why is it as I mentioned at the end of the day I want to find the pH equilibrium or pH saturation to get the pH saturation obviously I need to take logarithm to transform this H plus into minus log H plus that is the final aspect I guess. So, if I take logarithm on both sides log k is equal to what now log of H plus yes minus log of Ca2 plus minus log of HCO3 minus right and then if I take this to the left hand side and this to the right hand side let us say right or multiply it by negative let us say what will I have I will have minus log k is equal to minus log H plus plus log of calcium minus log of HCO3 minus. Again you do not need to mark this up uh, just try to understand the relevant uh, what is it uh, process that is it. So, here this is nothing but the pH right and this too what is K minus log of K2 by Ks right. So, this is a constant yes and this what does this give me for a given calcium concentration and given alkinity or carbonate concentration yes I will now be able to calculate the pH equilibrium right. So, pH equilibrium will be is equal to log of so we have minus log calcium right minus log HCO3 minus and minus log K2 by Ks right. So, if I want to make it plus I will say it is Ks by K2 right. So, this pH at equilibrium this you can write it as if it is P Ca2 plus right. So, then it will be a positive P I am saying it is minus log same case here you can say it is P of alkinity plus log of this constant Ks by K2 right. So, what is this equilibrium indicating? It is the equilibrium indicating the case when this solid is just precipitating let us say right. So, for a given system if you know the calcium concentration and the alkinity are in terms of HCO3 minus I can then calculate this uh, pH equilibrium let us say right and what can I do from that? So, this Langlier saturation index let us say I or LSI will be equal to the pH actual pH minus the pH at equilibrium which we just calculated and you see how we can calculate this right. So, for a given case you can see if I is greater than 0 it is super saturated and if I is equal to 0 it is just saturated I less than 0 it is under saturated. If it is under saturated again this is the Langlier saturation index I think I had the name earlier let me just yes Langlier stability index pardon me. So, Langlier stability index right and if it is super saturated I know depending on the level of super saturation you can you know that it can have lead to lot of precipitate being formed. So, under saturated again you know it can lead to corrosion. So, typical value it seems like if I is equal to or around 0 0.2 this is ideal this is the condition that you typically want to look at and people use this Langlier saturation index to just have back of the page calculation or rough calculation to see whether it is saturated or super saturated or under saturated right. So, that is one way to uh, look at your case. Let me move on. So, recarbonation. So, I guess we already looked at this uh, if I adding CO2 
is relatively costly than adding HCl or H2SO4, but I mentioned why we will not add them, right. Why? Because one thing TDS will increase, Cl minus will stay in the solution, SO4 2 minus will stay in the solution. That is not something that I want and also they will not add to any buffering. But by adding CO2, we will have HCO3 minus. So, that is a good way for a buffer or a good buffer. So, that is why we add carbon dioxide even though it is slightly costlier. Earlier, they used to use burnt gas as the source, let us say, but now I guess you have enough uh, different ways to have high pressured carbon dioxide systems, let us say, right. So, usually before filtration looks like to avoid precipitation on the filtered media. Anyway, that is one aspect that you typically use it before filtration. So, here we have another example, let us just look at that. A 50 MLD, MLD meaning million liter per day, 1 million is 20 to the power of 6, right. 1 million liter per day MLD. A 50 MLD raw water source is to be softened to reduce the hardness, fine. And the mineral analysis of the raw water is given below. Let us look at this. So, compared to the previous example we looked at this, looked at this is more realistic because these are the way or these are the ions you will typically be able to measure. Earlier I think we measured something as if CaCO3 was given and I think MgCl2 was given and so on and so forth. Rarely will they exist as CaCO3 and rarely will we know what was put into the water. So, that was just for a theoretical case. But here we see that we have H2CO3 or carbon dioxide and calcium, magnesium, alkanity which is expressed as CaCO3 obviously alkanity will always be in equivalent units or expressed as CaCO3 and SO4 2 minus and Cl minus right. So, we have the relevant uh, constituents here and what else? So, they say that pH is 7 obviously that makes our job uh, easier. Using the given information determine the total carbonate and non-carbonate hardness this is pretty standard we know how to do that. But before doing that we, you know we are talking about total hardness right. So, we are multi using the concentrations of two different compounds and in general we are not going to express them as moles per litre it does not make much sense it has to be in equivalents per litre right. So, equivalents per litre relatively difficult for the layman to understand so we express the units as CaCO3. So, the first step is to convert all this into CaCO3 units we will look at that and also looks like how much lime and soda ash is needed for only removing calcium softening right. Typically that is the one salt to cash calcium softening means typically about uh, removing the calcium that is associated with the carbonate hardness right and also what is the CO2 needed later and the kilograms of CaCO3 how much sludge is going to be produced let us see because if I am removing calcium what is going to precipitate out CaCO3 the solid is going to precipitate out. So, how much is being uh, what do we say precipitated and then just the initial and final diagrams and such let us say. Assume that the residual calcium hardness in the softened water is this, this is my objective as I mentioned we can never get to 0. So, this is the residual uh, calcium hardness let us say right. So, anyway let us go ahead and look at uh, how we go about things. So, first thing is conversion as I mentioned we want it in equivalent units or typically we use the equivalent units in terms of or express them in terms of CaCO3. So, what is the aspect here in the first column we have the chemicals or the compounds here the concentration milligram per liter which was given earlier and then the equivalents this is with respect to charge H2 CO3 2 H plus or CO3 2 minus. So, equivalent is 2 Ca2 plus 2 charge equivalent is 2 similarly for everything out here I guess right. So, let us uh, move on here. So, then here we get the molecular weight and so on and so forth. So forth. For alkanity, please remember that the units were already present as uh, or given as milligram per liter as CaCO3. So, all this is not required. If it is 195 milligram per liter as CaCO3, even if you jump over hoops, it is again going to end up as 195 milligram per liter as CaCO3. For SO4 2 minus and such 2, well, we because we want the chart, we are putting them in, right. So, we have the molecular weight, dividing the molecular weight by the equivalent we will get the equivalent weight yes and then I guess dividing with that you are going to get your particular equivalent concentration, concentration expressed as equivalents. But I want it expressed as CaCO3, I know that 50 grams of CaCO3 1 equivalent. So, if I multiply it with that equivalent equivalent cancels out and the units will be in terms of as CaCO3 right. 
So here, well, this is a theoretical exercise. In general, we will never have all the anion and cation information, but people typically want us to check it within a margin of, I think, 10 percent error. So here, if I sum up all the cations and all this anions, we need to see charge balance and that is what we see, equivalence of the cation and equivalence of the anion, let us say positive and negative both are balanced right so that is what we see that is one aspect that they mentioned as an aside here. So, construct a bar diagram that includes the chemical constituents that are important for softening fine. So, here there are some aspects I guess we already know this typically we are placing the cations at the top and anions at the bottom right and which cations I guess are we having here they are typically placed according to the reactivity to lime. And with respect to lime or based on lime addition, which one will typically precipitate out if there is alkinity and such? It is the Ca2 plus, that is why we have it. And then, okay, so one aspect I should have mentioned was this info I presented was with respect to the cations. But we should always have this acid if it is present, right? If there is any dissolved acid, H2CO3 present. So, that is first going to react with my lime. So, first I am going to have H2CO3 and then the relevant constituents and here calcium followed by magnesium and then the rest of the cations. So, let us see what we have. So, we have some H2CO3, I guess we just uh, looked at that. So, H2CO3 equivalents 116. So, any lime I add will first react with this H2CO3. So, that is why uh, I guess they have it in this manner, right H2CO3. So, from here we are starting our axis or 0 and then we are putting on our calcium 187.5 and then the relevant magnesium and sodium. Similarly, for HCO3 minus, SO42 minus and Cl minus. Obviously, though there has to be a charge balance, let us say, right and that is what we see, that is why, you know, we see good agreement out here, right. So, what is the next aspect? Again, we, what are the take home messages here? We see that total hardness calcium plus magnesium is greater than HCO3 minus or the alkinity as people are, or uh, as laymen are calling it. But you see that for this particular example, we are only concerned with removing calcium and as you can see HCO3 minus concentration is greater than calcium, right? It is greater than calcium. So, what does that tell me? All the calcium hardness is as carbonate hardness. So, for that if there is enough carbonate, what do I just need to do or uh, bicarbonate? I just need to increase the pH such that this HCO3 minus will convert to CO3 2 minus and it will precipitate out, right. So, we know that. So, it is just addition of lime that we want to look at, right. That is the thing that uh, take home message we have here. So, let us see what else we have. We have the question here and total hardness it is uh, calcium plus magnesium and this is the total hardness, right. And what else do we have? Carbonate hardness I guess is equal to just the CaCO3. Yes, carbonate hardness is equal to HCO3 minus, right? Pardon me, not CaCO3. HCO3 minus was 195. So, that is the relevant aspect. And this is what I just mentioned with respect to calcium and the carbonate hardness, right? Let me move on. So, from, I mean, this is just the relevant aspect. It was HCO3 minus 195. That is why the uh, carbonate hardness is equal to this. That is the case because the total hardness was greater than HCO3 minus. Now, what is the remaining part? That will be the non-carbonate hardness, right? So, let us just calculate that. Non-carbonate hardness, total hardness minus this. So, that is 17.5. That is relatively less here, right? And calculate the lime, soda ash and carbon dioxide dosages required for selective calcium removal. Here, when they are we are talking about selective calcium softening, we are talking about single stage removal when we say single stage and such, we will discuss this later, but we are talking about only the calcium removal that is associated that to the calcium associated with carbonate. So, we will look at this table, yes, but we will cover this later, but for now keep in mind that when we are talking about single stage, right, single stage lime, what is it that we are adding? We are adding enough such that obviously the H2CO3 is removed and then the calcium carbonate or calcium uh, associated with the carbonate hardness, let us say. So, we are just adding that. For just removing calcium, do I need to add uh, Na2CO3? No. Why is this? Because all of the calcium is associated with CO3 2 minus or HCO3 minus. So, I do not, I do not need to add any source of CO3 2 minus. So, that is something to keep in mind, right. So, let me just move on. We will cover these tables again later. 
So lime dose required is carbon dioxide and one for this particular uh, case of calcium hardness associated with the carbonates, right. So from the diagram I guess we can look at this. So expressed as CaCO3 we have this from the diagram carbon dioxide concentration or H2CO3 concentration and the calcium carbonate hardness let us say right or the calcium concentration. And then looks like in the question we, they were asking us about CaO I guess not slaked lime. So that is why you know to be uh, what do we say relatively sure they are calculating it or we are calculating it in terms of CaO let us say right. So equivalence again Ca2 plus and O2 minus right. So, 56 by 2 that will be equal to 28 let us say calcium is 40, oxygen is 16 right. So, that is equal to 56 molecular weight by 2 the valency. So, that is why equivalent weight is 28, equivalent weight of CaCO3 is 50 milligram per liter. So, now I will get the units in terms of as CaO let us say right. So, that is why it is CaO as CaO let us say right. So, that is one aspect lime traditionally I guess yes slake lime is CaOH twice but in India they use it interchangeably you can look at the question in detail when you do that. So if I want it for 50 MLD though right 50 million is 10 power 6 liters per day right. So I can and I also know I guess 1 kg per 10 power 6 milligrams transforming the units and such. So in one day I will need 8500 kgs per day. Uh, looks like I am overshooting the time but let me finish this question and we will end it here. Because there is sufficient alkinity to precipitate calcium obviously as I mentioned no soda ash is required let us say. So that is what we see here obviously everything is associated with HCO3 minus only thing I need to do is to precipitate a CaCO3 solid I just need to change the pH such that HCO3 minus now becomes CO3 2 minus and this CO3 2 minus will react with the calcium and it will form the precipitate. So, that is the thing that is why we do not need to add soda let us say. So, what is the carbon dioxide required after cell to calcium removal right it is equal to the estimated carbon alkinity of the carbonate alkinity of the softened water. Again simple exercise I will skim through this or skim through this. So, carbonate alkinity of softened water right after softening is equal to source water alkinity yes minus source water calcium hardness because I am removing that plus estimated residual calcium hardness of softened water right. So, it is pretty straightforward here. So, it is not assuming residual calcium hardness is given as 30 milligram per liter. So, from that the equivalents can be straightforward calculated this is the alkinity this is the calcium hardness that was removed this is the excess and that is why we have the need for carbon dioxide here to be 37.5 I guess right. But here the units are expressed as CaCO3. Again here we are going to change the units using the equivalents right and then we are going to get this particular case of 16 milligram per liter let us say right. So, let me move on and then again 50 MLD right mass required will be this is the concentration this is mass per time how much is the mass per time here I have mass per volume but I need it in mass per time. How do I do that obviously multiply it with volume per time but what is volume per time the flow rate that is what we are multiplying it with here and we are getting 825 kgs per day is required let us say. And I guess uh, the final uh, what do we say bar chart. So, this is the residual calcium magnesium we never removed sodium too we never removed let us say right. So, I guess after bubbling in your particular carbon dioxide or residual this thing carbon dioxide requirement it is 37.5 let us say right. So, that is 37.5 and SO4 2 minus and Cl minus we never touched and so this is the final uh, bar chart that represents the constituents there right. So, with that I will end today's session in the next session we will wrap up uh, lime softening there are just some configurations we, we need to look at. Then we will move on to one of the aspects that is quite regularly used which is adsorption but that I will leave for the next session. Thank you.